You sent for me on urgent, Mr. Scarden. Have you seen this? Yes, I believe there are several photocopies circulating around the department. Find them and destroy them. Of course. This is the fourth English-speaking country in which this filth has been published. Whoever wrote it must have good international connections. It has to be Kyle. It sounds like him. Herbert Scarden, who sold an entire country's human rights for the price of a state pension and the grease of absolute power in his soft hands, is a small man. But then most poisonous... Yes, 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 Miss Blake, I didn't ask for a recital. And the same obscene caricature. Kyle's trademark. And that is savage. A tarantula with your face at an intercom. I now intend to paralyze Kyle's fingers any time he goes anywhere near a typewriter. He can't get any likes into the papers in this country. And the time is long overdue for us to stop him putting the stuff anywhere else. Us? You. Impossibilities today and authentic miracles tomorrow. This is a problem we've already solved, Miss Blake. I have? How? When we were trying to discover the identity of Kyle's informant in high places, it was your idea to concoct a number of Faragos. Fictions, plausible future PCD schemes. Costing me eye strain and a night's sleep. Three or four of which were extremely sound. Creative, almost. And worth further consideration. One of them was ASH, Authorised Systematic Harassment. You will, therefore, revise and refine it in detail and attend a meeting here at four o'clock this afternoon. I don't think it'll work on Kyle. You saw what happened when you tried to make him a non-citizen. My information from inside that newspaper is that without news editor Doran's tacit support, Kyle would never have the contact to push that poison abroad. So it's to be Doran. Close enough for Kyle to question cause and effect, action and consequence, and wonder who's next. Ash. My idea. Never meant to be implemented. There is not a screw untightened in Britain's machine for control and coercion. And every day, some of the country's best brains are working to make that machine more efficient still. Kyle's accuracy, knotting his own noose. Four o'clock, Miss Blake. You're throwing it about a bit, aren't you? Yes, well, I got tired of splitting infinitives and faking a primary school style for the underground press. That's good, but everybody knows you. Why? Oh, wet Sunday afternoon, Chelsea Embankment, near where the old Pier Hotel used to be and James Cameron used to lean. Remember him? The grand maestro who taught every journalist his trade. I thought I'd see if I could remember any of his lessons. They'd like you to get some hard lessons in a different style. Against which plans have been made, Tom? I should probably be going away for a bit, till the heat's off, anyway. No use asking where. Oh, I don't know. Possibly my wife and children. It's possible. Not very likely. That should be with the network. The Kyle Private Resistance Movement. Not so private. It looks after you. It looks after anybody who cares to join, but of course most of you are too scared. I can remember the day when you would have pushed for us to print that article. Yes. Now all you care about is the commas in the government handouts and getting the names of the hypocrites right. And twitching about a wife and a state mortgage and four kids who need jobs when they grow up. Well, at least I give you plenty of chance to resist. Dissidents by proxy. Apply to the PCD, why don't you? Kyle, I did my best to do what you're doing for a long time. Now you're scared. I put out some good stuff once. The truth. I remember that. I do, Tom. I do remember that. Past tense. Keep the propaganda fires burning, boss. Miss Blake, since your scheme for authorised systematic harassment will require special skills, I asked the bailiff's department to draw up a short list. One man stood out. That's his record. Quite an intimidator. That's an incredible achievement record. The best. Which is why his appointment will be a new one. What? Special bailiff. His rank? That of yours, Miss Blake. Deputy Controller. You will work with him. You, McCrea, will work under him. Uh, no problem there, sir. I can probably listen and learn, too. I hope so, Miss Blake. I don't see any additions or refinements to your Ash project here. Could it be that it was well worked out in the first place? The new special bailiff managed a few extra developments. But then he's very excited by the project, as you can see. Special bailiff, Arthur Hayes. He doesn't look very muscular. We can supply all the muscle he's likely to need. He will also have complete authority from the Home Secretary herself to demand, repeat demand, full and immediate cooperation from any other government department concerned. One of the developments I spoke of, his suggestion. Ultimate clout. I think that's the phrase. You really must have poured on the pressure, Mr. Scarden. Yes. 
for the public good. Who's the target of Hayes' first attention? Is it still to be Doran? Object lesson. Years ago, he was the muckraking journalist Kyle is now, friend and colleague. You could be wrong about him. He has been towing our line. Only apparently, Miss Blake. Personal gale warning, Kyle. Me or for you? For you or yours. Not much detail, I'm afraid. I'm supposed to be entitled to see all persons and papers of the BCD. But lately, the persons haven't been saying very much. And the papers that arrive at my desk have been discreetly doctored. It sounds as though it's time you got out. I must admit, it seems very near. I know. You've got to have time to fix up the dog, cats, and my bolt hole. Scarden and his friends are playing with an idea of Miss Blake's called Ash. Authorized systematic harassment. And the first guinea pig is going to be someone very near you. Who? I don't know. Only a month ago, I wouldn't have had any difficulty in finding it out. It seems to be an authorized version of the Chinese water torture. Stop here, Should have seen it 15 years ago. Max. Who did it belong to? Never mind. Now, what's all this about putting off the Denmark trip? Well, something's come up. Yeah. We're not getting illegal immigrants into France anymore. No, we're getting some into France. Yes, and the French immigration cops are sending them back. Look, it's urgent that we go to Denmark and now. I can't, not just now. Why not? I have to think twice before nipping off to France, Denmark, or anywhere else. And somebody close to me is about to be pulped by the PCD. Well, it's not your wife and kids again. I don't know. Who did it belong to, anyway? Oh, someone who did nothing all her life but help people. Oh, yeah. How the hell do you think a dock worker's son like me got to learn eight languages and become a status one trade agent? I don't know. Didn't ask. Now, Denmark. May I say how very pleased I am to be working with you all on this most challenging and worthwhile project. And may I congratulate you, Miss Blake, on its conception. Immaculate. Thank you, Special Bailiff Hayes. You've read my amendments, McRae? Yes, sir. We stay close and obviously close. The same men to follow every day and noticeably. The subject, Doran, and all members of his family. We call it proximity awareness. You must give me the recipe sometime. And the followers will be my men. And I know I can rely on very smooth coordination between all of you. We could give the French lads a pep talk, reorganize these points of entry. Well, how are we off for Kruger Rands? Kitty's in good nick. Well, we'll pay off the French squad, tell them to lie low until we work out new routes. We'll go over and fix more safe houses and some reception committees in Denmark. We? Oui. I can hardly let you go on your own, can I? <laughs> now you're talking. How about this personal threat? Oh, I don't know. I could flog around for a couple of weeks and not get anywhere. I don't think the PCD would get within sniffing distance of my wife and family once I got a message up there. Shouldn't you be with them anyway? Oh, for God's sake, just... Oh, forget it. I'll say this for you. You're one hell of a family man. She knew what she was signing on for, Dave. It wasn't carpet slippers. I hope this plane of yours is in better nick than it was the last time we crossed the North Sea. Well, we uh, sort of acquired a new one. It came in crates from Japan. Marked rubber stamps, official use only.
morning, Mrs. Doran. We don't rush your shopping in our account. Who are you? Why are you following me? I don't care whether you call it a supplementary assessment or a flying saucer. Are you telling me that I've got to pay another 1,500 Anglo dollars in income tax without even leaving to appeal? What? Within seven days? Well, I can't. Look. Hello? My name is Arthur Rowland Hayes, Mrs. Doran. I'm a special bailiff, and as such, I have full right of access to all premises at any hour of the day or night. Where did you get that key? You occupy this house on a mortgage from a building society taken over by the state. As a state servant, therefore, I am fully entitled to duplicate keys. Not to this house, you're not. It's mine. Ah. We can come quickly to the purpose of my visit. The State Loan and Finance Company has been making a re-examination of its commitments. We've always kept up the payments. We're, we're in front, even. That's hardly the point, Mrs. Doran. This house, like all dwellings in Britain, is classified according to citizen status. Your husband has just been downgraded to class three. By the computer, of course. You will obviously be given time to vacate and to take up status three accommodation. How long? Two weeks. That is the official requirement for your removal and a list of S3 areas. They're all slums. Aesthetically, some of them could be considered substandard compared with this area. They're jungles. But you'll find most of them are covered by the government's enlightened, in my view, Environment Improvement Plan for 1998. What about my friends here? Schools for the children? I think you'll find there's something more properly discussed with your husband, Mrs. Doran. Hayes has been at it two weeks now. A little smirk on his face every time he puts a nail-bitten thumb into another pressure point. He does work a long and conscientious day. The Inquisition would have loved him. A slow and tidy vulture, picking bones clean one by one. Fastidious. His daily reports are a model. And forwarded to the Home Secretary, good for your precarious image. More than you think, Miss Blake. And Hayes' build-up, you must admit, is superb. Disconnection of the telephone, the compulsory... And falsified. ...eye test, which revoked his driving licence, caused his car to be impounded. His work keeps him outside public transport hours. Nobody has any business being out on the streets after nine o'clock, anyway. So Doran has to sleep in his office, catch buses and trains, and spends two hours during the day with his family. And then the simplicity of the disruption of his moving house. Miss Blake. I think this idea of yours, an authorised systematic harassment... As applied by special bailiff Hayes has enormous potential. A slow and noiseless steamroller of the state. A daily brown envelope dropping on the mat. Drop. Drop. Water torture. I think ASH should be the first item on the agenda at the next proposals meeting with the Home Secretary. Perhaps with a list of persons who should be dissuaded from dissent. Including political opponents and anybody else she doesn't like, and your back as old blue eyes. And you might get a people's commendation out of it. Except I don't think it'll work. It's meant to deter Kyle. I don't think it will. I think it'll make him more dangerous. 
Oh, dear. And it was, after all, your idea. I know the editorial chapel did its best, but when you get a three-line directive from the top brass of our mealy mouth union, you know when you beat. Yes, I'll confirm in writing. I failed to pass a job fitness evaluation panel, and I accept the post of deputy assistant news editor at half my present salary. No, I haven't, I'm afraid. Mm. We'll be all right. Hello, Tom. Good Lord, what's wrong with you? You look terrible. These. I think they're your fault. And I don't think there's anything I can do about them. My fault? Well, it seems that Scarden and Co. see me as your international press sponsor. You? Oh, and your good friend, the PCD, Miss Blake, rang three times. She'd like to speak to you. All right. Listen, how long have you been getting these? Uh, I haven't had any sleep for a week. And I mean a week. I wonder if any of your chums from the network could get me some sleeping pills. You going to see a doctor? Ah, well, we've been reclassified. Got a new and very busy one. No more questions, Kyle. Just the sleeping pills. Yeah, hang on, Tom. I've got some here. There we are. And I wonder if I could borrow your car for a couple of hours. They've requisitioned mine. Listen, have you got any more of these? You're welcome to use this place, Digger, for whatever villain you and Blaney are up to when the phone's clean. But if you chip as much as one cup, I'll chip your block. Yeah, you're one of the few geezers who might be able to. It's nice, classy. How's your clever pal? He's just had a holiday. I think he's got indigestion as well. I've never seen anybody eat so much meat before. Oh, lucky. I had one of these new state sunflower cutlets the other day. Oh, flatulent. Hello, Digger. How's it going? Crooked as usual. I've got to hang around the smoke for a bit while somebody looks at a, a few state commodity warehouses and finds out which foreman wants an unofficial negotiated wage increase. Tax-free, of course. <laughs> yeah, of course. Oh, thievery must be a growth industry. <laughs> always has been. The government's always been best at it, mind. Yeah, small brown envelopes. What? I'm sure you could have said what you have to say to me on the phone. No. It must be personal, then. You're insisting on coming here to discuss it. Yes, it is. Did you have a good holiday with your wife in Scotland? Does that matter? You were there ten days. I thought you said that you and your wife had separated officially and completely. Have you nothing better to do with your time, Lynn, than check up on my whereabouts? You're on the list, James. It's a formality that such information comes across my desk. I hope you enjoyed your trip. Yes, I did, thank you. Very much. Which is more than I can say for Tom Doran. He hasn't enjoyed the trip that your bully boys have been giving him. Oh, him. Authorised systematic harassment, I believe it's called. I understand it was your idea? Distantly, yes. Distantly? You're crucifying him. Anyway, I can't talk about it. Why not? You're afraid to or ashamed to? James, I should go before I ask the guard outside the door to remove you. It won't do, Lynn. Now, I suggest you call your frighteners off, Tom Doran and his family. I suggest you do it now, this minute. My frighteners, they're not mine. They're nothing to do with me. Who is Special Bailiff Hayes? An official. Carrying out your lousy idea. Do you know what they're doing to him? Have you got the slightest idea? They are ripping him apart. Tom Doran, his wife and his four children. And do you know why? 
because some idiot, some lunatic in your organization thinks he's been helping me, but he hasn't. Not once. Not once. He's too frightened. He's too frightened of your organization. He's frightened of losing his job. He is groveling because he is frightened for his family. Now, you tell me why. Why your bully boys are pushing him into the gutter and then kicking his face in. Were you born, vicious Lynn, or has it just come on you with age? God, you bitch! I can't make any promises, but I'll see what I can do about Dora. By the way, I have not been in 500 miles of my wife. The doll's house floated beautifully, and they tied it to the bank while they went to work inside and out. When... Have you changed your mind? Oh, no. Not now. Oh, no. Come on, kids. Marching order. I'm grateful for your deep personal interest in this project, Controller, and glad you think it's progressing satisfactorily. Then you must lend your mind to its logical development. You know, in the old days, our political masters had imaginary sanctions imposed upon them by a so-called free press and the gaudy banners of rabbles at demonstrations. They still made fortunes, free houses, publishers' advances, directorships, that sort of thing. They're still privileged now. But now, I believe that we, the bureaucrats, have the instrument to impose real sanctions on the grace and favor they enjoy. Imagine for I instance... thought of it myself, Controller. I dislike being interrupted. I'm sorry, sir. Imagine if, and I say if, at the next election, any candidate could be singled out from his individual hustings and a complete ash program drawn up to remind him of the difference between the cant of his ideological spoutings and the manner in which his income, status, and lifestyle was achieved. All those perks. Applicable to anyone in high places. Indeed. We might begin by drawing up a list. Now, what's the name of that bossy treasury accountant that the Home Secretary dislikes so much? Maudsley. Maudsley. The one we think might be friendly with Kyle. Sorry there's no meal. I didn't feel like it. I'm not hungry. Without naming me, did you tell Doran that I would try to help? No. His telephone's been cut. I sent a man round to ask him to ring here. The harassment was my idea, but only as one of a number of fake ideas deliberately leaked by the department in order to trap Faceless. I never intended it should actually be used. Oh, what a pity. Now it has been. Just tell Doran to hang on. It'll take me a day or two to convince the Home Secretary that Ash could backfire and burn us all. I'll go over Scarden's head if I have to. So now you're taking a chance. I deplore systematic harassment. Strange. It was your idea in the first place. Quite an operation just to discourage me. It was quite an article. Yes? Yes, Ben of Hayes. Details, please. Yes. Yes, I see. Uh, full report first thing tomorrow morning. Twenty minutes ago, Dorian and his family were found in their garage. They were in a car with the engine running. Dorian and his wife died from carbon monoxide fumes. The children from barbiturate poisoning.
My fault. Oh, my pills, my car. My article. Not you, James. Me. It was my idea. Nowhere to go. Stay the night. Oh. Clean sheets, new start, erased memories. No. Comfort for both of us. There isn't any. I'm sorry about your friend, Kyle. You tried. Just tell me one thing. Has Miss Blake said anything lately about knowing who I am? No, no, not a word. She's had reasonable proof for some time, and it occurs to me she might have passed it on. I doubt it. She'd only be incriminating herself and keeping it quiet for so long. I'm not prone to persecution mania, but two events suggest that they are onto me. Firstly, I've been replaced as Treasury Auditor at the BCD at Scarden's request. And when I was at the Treasury, being given that news, Scarden was chairing a meeting of the Ash Committee, at which a large number of names were mooted as further victims of this systematic harassment. Yours amongst them, I suppose. It's time for me to emigrate. Yes. I can get you down river and away by tonight. When this long, dark night's over, and if you don't go back to Fleet Street, you'll be a fine travel agent. Yeah. No, I have other exits, thank you. What about the pets? Spotty and the cats are already with friends, safe from the PCD. My new address is in there. We will all miss you very much, Mr. Maudsley. Call me faceless. I'm beginning to prefer it. What do you mean blankets made out of real wool? Don't kid me, Wacker. They don't exist anymore. They're all made out of chemicals with names a foot long. Hey? Eh? Oh. Oh, now you're talking. If the address on them is for a bailiff training establishment, I'll believe you. That mob of key old creepers don't have real blood in their veins. They need something proper to keep themselves warm. When? Tomorrow night. No problem. It'll be a pleasure to nick this lot. Morning. If you catch that for a breakfast habit, you're gonna find yourself in trouble, kid. Yesterday, Tom Doran and his wife committed suicide, having killed their four children. It was my fault. Not unless you pull the trigger. How? Or by permission of a new PCD appointment. Special bailiff Arthur Roland Hayes. And I want him. Easy. Collapse him as well. Then concrete wellies. No. Otherwise, we're no better than he is. All right. We will walk Mr. Hayes down the same road that he took Tom Doran. Try faceless. It's no good. He's gone. He's on too many lists. But I expect he'll be back for the big round-up. There is somebody who could help. With respect, Controller, may I suggest the failure of Miss Blake's systematic harassment project was due to one factor only, an omission, and easily rectified. How? Future subjects to be psychologically tested. Suicidal tendencies to be noted. Depending on these results, future ash subjects can be processed to approach the edge of self-destruction, but never pass it. Miss Blake. 
I defer willingly to Special Bailiff Hayes' greater experience in these matters. Let it be so noted. End of meeting. Most satisfactory. Thank you both. It's the same with all guinea pigs. Some are always wasted. I knew a beagle once who smoked 60 cigarettes a day. It died still a puppy. Harry Blaney would be glad to help as well. He's still top spiv in the north. That's a good thought. If we frame it properly, there might be a few Anglos in it for him. He always likes that. Well, I I'll get on my way. Right. Oh, and Digger. What? No nettle sandwiches, no flying teeth. We want him unmarked, Digger. Mint condition. And I want all his personal documents. I'll try. You should know by now my habit of a brisk walk. Sir. And more exercise wouldn't hurt you. Yes, sir. You can log cessation of duty at seven precisely. Sir. You'll find I don't sign overtime sheets easily. Special bailiff Arthur Hayes. Yes. Message for you. in the belief about what I'm doing, but it'll mend. Everything does. As deputy controller, I have access to full personnel files. Here's Arthur Hayes. Read it. It doesn't leave here. Can I make notes? No, there's no time. Just read it. This blue file is Hayes' personal one. You didn't ask for this. Private notes on me, Scard, and his family. He's a born snooper. Gifted. He must be as good at his job as you are. No, I don't leave papers lying around. And here are the useless official forms and letterhead you asked for. Put a foot wrong with any of this, and I'll help Herbert Scarden 26 hours a day to nail you. Oh, what a little career centurion you are. Now, if you'll excuse me. I learned it when I was three and you needed half a brick in each hand. Take me on and you'll end up with your eyeballs between your shoulder blades. Sign these. The blank. Yeah, but like you. And absolutely useless unless Frank with a coded and official stamp. Just sign goggles. You're taking orders now. Checkpoints for illegal petrol users along the M1 again what's left of it. It's a good job I'm a special constable now. Yeah, what? Oh, thanks. No water. No, a very good friend of mine sold me the papers only last week. One of his bigger thief as I am. Every little counts. Blaney the copper. Well, now I've heard everything. I might even buy a helmet. I'm uh, just shoving off to see this engraver of yours. 
Right, Digger? Don't get lost. I'm on, boss. They tell me there's some desk artist you want leaned on. Him. Special bailiff, Arthur Hayes. Well, he's a weedy-looking tripod. What do you do? Oh, he wrote some letters to a colleague of mine. Downgraded his house, car, food, future. Ended up by harassing him to death. Glad to get hold of her dreams up these ideas. Spend the days thinking up dirtier ways of picking wings off flies. Look, I thought we were supposed to be in a hurry. Well, you always were. Go on running. Oh! Me ID photo you asked for. Ah, yes. Thumbprint's gonna be a problem. No, I haven't got one. It's blank. Paid a thousand Anglos to a plastic quack for that. I know who I am. I don't need clerks in offices or computers to tell me. You are now special bailiff, Arthur Roland Hayes. Hayes is unmarried, teetotal, and non-smoker, lives with his parents, both retired civil servants. Two sisters, both married, again to civil servants. All the Hayes family live in state houses. Naturally. And here's the key that will let you barge in. Right. Oh, that was quick, Digger. Yeah, old Frank just laughed. Said any printer with his skill could make a coded stamp like that in his sleep. Wouldn't even take an honest Anglo. I'll get over later with a crate of stout for him. Yeah, you probably help him drink it. OK, two crates, then. Let's have a try. So, here we go. Twenty-four hour eviction notices for every member of the Hayes family. Telephone disconnection mandates marked top urgent. Automatic cutout at the local exchange. Authority to impound all vehicles found on all premises, including bicycles. Got it. Cut off the blowers, barge in, tell them they're chucked out, drive everything away. And you'll have to get a move on. That won't make a Bigger. change. Come and sit down. This is your job. Money belt, which Dave will fill with Krugerrands. Well-forged ration books. While Harry lays on the eviction chat at each house, you will plant some of these and some of these. You will then telephone the Public Control Enforcement Office and give them all the details. The PCD will then round up the Hayes family like greased lightning. Can you do it? No sweat. Be a pleasure. Authorize systematic harassment for every single member of the Hayes family. This must be a mistake. I'm a status one citizen. My brother-in-law on one side... Yes, Mr. Carter, I realize your brother-in-law is special bailiff Hayes, but you must know that in our society towards progress, privilege is always subject to re-examination. Examine the premises for any wanton structural deterioration, if you would, Mr. Featherstone, and impound all vehicles. Yes, bailiff wearing. And on the other side, I'm related to a deputy subcontroller. Somebody's going to feel let down then, aren't they? Time for a telephone call before you do anything. Please. I shall require you to sign here as a citizen's free acknowledgement of eviction and impoundment, if you would, Mr. Carter. Please. Remember always that the state knows what it's doing, and the public good is all. No, Mrs. Hayes. And may I remind you, this is a private contingency number that should not be in your possession. Yes, I am aware that you're being held in one of our enforcement offices. 
I'll see that you are kept fully informed. There's absolutely no doubt about the authenticity of this documentation. Stamp, signature, thumbprint, duplicate to local PCD authority. His mother sounded hysterical. So would mine. Where is he? Why would he issue all these? Why, why indeed? He has almost as much paperwork on us. What? His private inquiries into you, me, and others in this department. He has a personal file on us, which I have had shredded. Here is the destruct certificate. Considerate of you, Miss Blake. Practical. I have a little dirty linen myself. I prefer it kept in the basket. Will you revoke these impoundment and eviction orders? Normally I would. With Hayes' entire family facing charges of illegal possession, I'd need a counter signature from the Home Secretary. Checks and balances. Embarrassing. To say the least. Would it be too embarrassing for you to say exactly what Hayes imagines he has on me? I mean, did he suggest intemperance? Or that as a bachelor, I was a bit suspect? He had noted that you kept false records of Tuesdays and Fridays planning meetings. Good Lord. But you spent them instead in the company of a computer programmer named Barbara Fairley, whose promotion you'd helped along in return for certain favors. And psychologically. Yes? He had also noted that you seemed to be dominated by your mother. I see. The man must be twisted. Will you revoke these eviction orders? What's your opinion of all this, Miss Blake? You've already had it. I recommended cancellation, but you're the controller. And the interests of the department must come first. Women, children, and bailiffs last. I wonder. I wonder if the death of Doran's family has somehow unhinged Bailiff Hayes. Special bailiff. In which case, he should be certified for treatment at an adult rehabilitation centre. And the sooner the better. I shall take great pleasure in ensuring that you spend the rest of your life in an unpleasant corrective institution. Yeah, we know. <laughs> what do you mean? My captor was thuggish looking, with a blotchy red complexion and a nose like a vulture. Oh, you want to watch your language. Come on, Windows, we're going for a ride. You try breaking into a canter, and I'll try breaking your ankles. Nice and loose, pal, and I'll drop. So you just lie there for half an hour, have a little kip, and then I'll tie the others. The chap that did it's inside there, right? Scanner clear. Clear. You know, if he'd have smiled once or twice, I'd have thought he was writing a dirty book. I am. He was sent us a copy. Oh. Gonna keep this. Yeah, why not? Special constable, special bailiff. You'll be after Herbert Scarden's job next. <laughs> Over and drive, boss. The vans are speeding merrily on their way. Merino. <laughs> oh, that's a lovely drop of real wool. Oh, your mongo are shoddy there. Oh, your hydrocarbonized filaments made out of Queen Victoria slag heaps. Send me one for Christmas. You can have it now. 1990, you make your own Christmases. See ya. Harry. Yes. Thank you. Nothing. Digger. Take care. Yes, sir. Hello, Hank? That's me. No, this one's free. Well, you call it a tribute, obituary, prayer, what you will. 
Anyway, it's on me. I want the Washington Post first, and then as much syndication as you can get. Right, you recording? Let's go. Catch line, a man called Tom Doran. Byline, anonymous. Begins. Tom Doran had everything to live for. He had a sound marriage, four lovely children, a detached house in a London suburb, and excellent health. Point, New Pa. He was also, for years, a good newspaper man, Point. He was 44. Point. New Pa. He should be alive today. Point. New Pa. Uh, Tom Doran had the misfortune to be the news editor of a national paper at a time when it has become dangerous to write the truth. Point, new par. Tom Doran was marked down for, quote, special attention, end quote, from the public control department, the now notorious PCD, which keeps the British people towing the bureaucratic line. Point, new par. This is the story of how Tom, his wife, and four children were murdered by the state in Great Britain in this year of our Lord, 1990. A story which will not appear in the British media, but which the world must now know. Point, New Path.